It's early evening, and at the Northern Control Center, Emily is two hours late for her shift. What a disaster. There's a big diesel spill, and they've shut the M25. Let's have a look at what Pillock messed up my way into work. As twilight spreads across the land, there's a shift in atmosphere on the M25. Nighttime falls, it's dark, people might not be quite so aware or tuned into what's going on. They've possibly been driving for hours. It does bring a sort of level of uncertainty. What's going to happen? Oh, the M25 can be a, a, a different animal at night. Um, you think it's going to be quieter? You get all sorts of stuff. You get suicides and you get pedestrians get run over and killed. Um, you know, everything happens really. All of life is here. Always this sort of people this time, like it's lorry drivers, people working on the roads, and strippers. <laughs> These are we're, we're vampires of the night. Six three, can I get your location? Near Heathrow, traffic officers Andy and Keith are also just clocking on for the night shift. We need to get a uh, word of the day on the radio, Keith. Word of the day? Yeah. Hyperbole. Hi who? Hyperbole. And what's Sorry. hyperbole mean? Oh, hang on. Hi hyperbole. It's a real word, is it? Oh, we'll have some of this. What? Oh, definitely. <laughs> hyperbole, exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. Ooh, oh, we're going to have some of that. That says hyperbole. The customer's making hyperbole comments. That says hyperbole. No, it's hyperbole. God, where was you when school started? Get received. Um, 6-3, can I get your location? Andy and Keith have been sent to Junction 16 to investigate reports of a cupboard in the carriageway. Um, what would be your ETA? Who loses a cupboard in a road is an excellent question. I mean, what do they do when they get there? Do they like, what happened to my cupboard? Last year, there were more than 2,000 call-outs to items in the road. Keith and Andy are hoping they can find this one before the cupboard causes a crash. They have the potential to uh, cause mayhem. People will swerve out of the way, crash into each other, get punctures. The blowouts plow them into the central reservation sometimes, so we need to get rid of the wood as soon as possible. OK, do it now, baby. It's on. OK. Removing debris is dangerous even in daylight. But with the speed of traffic increasing and visibility dramatically decreasing at night, this job is even riskier. I think that was it there, wasn't it? Hang on, there's more there. It's everywhere. OK, baby, coming over for the slip. OK. Fragments of cupboard are strewn across the carriageway. But even the smallest bit of debris can cause an accident, so they must be methodical. We got him. Two lads. Let's do it. While Andy holds up the traffic, Keith winds his way through the vehicles to retrieve the pieces of debris. There's four lanes here. It's not too bad. But it's bad enough for the public, of course. Right, we'll just get what we can out of the carriageway here. Oh, hang on, there's another bit over there, I think. We don't want people swerving for that. Excuse me a sec. Eventually, the motorway is cleared of debris and Keith can release the waiting traffic. Hotel Alpha Sierra Lima 62. <sighs> yeah, I think we got all the big bits out of the carriageway. Oh, bless them, they're so out of breath. Well done, mate, you're right. Except for the jogging. <laughs> <laughs> I feel fine. You feel fine? Yeah, yeah, I mean. Is that because you didn't run a mile it, down the motorway? It was a bit of a burden having to stand there and watch you run. Being a primed <laughs> athlete as I am, at one point I shuffled my weight from one foot to the next. <laughs> the maintenance team will be along later to take the debris away. It took just six minutes to clear. Then again, this sort of thing is bread and butter for the lads. One unusual one years ago was a vat of strawberry jam. Oh, I was with you on that one. Yeah, you were. Do you remember that? Yeah, we had to tow it off, didn't we? Massive big vat. Right? It was about it was about a two-ton vat of strawberry jam fell out the side of a lorry, and cars hit that. Oh, we was eating toast for months. We were. We were. 
In the control room, Emily is setting the signs and signals on the motorway for tonight's scheduled roadworks. Hello, engine room. Lovely. Um, what time are you starting? Every night, there are over 35 miles of road closures on the M25 for essential carriageway maintenance. There's always roadworks on the M25 at night. It's planned roadworks. It starts about 9 o'clock in the evening, they'll start to putting the cones out and then it starts for real about 10 o'clock. Have a safe evening. Cheers, bye bye. Do you always wish them a safe evening? I always do tend to say, yeah, have a safe evening because it is, it is a dangerous job. Tonight at Junction 5, Jason and his maintenance team are shutting lanes for some roadworks on the motorway. Nice one, sir. But before any work can start, someone has to put the cones out. I wouldn't want to work on, on, on the roadworks at night. I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to be one of these guys who puts the cones out. It can be frightening sometimes. On a few occasions, we have had people come at us with no headlights on. That's terrifying, that is, for the lads. Being where they are at the moment, it is very, 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 very dangerous. Extremely exposed. You've got nothing really between them and uh, the oncoming traffic. Hoping I don't get wiped out by a vehicle that's running the taper. The 150 metre cone taper is meant to narrow the traffic and divert it into the far lane. But some drivers cut it fine. Look, 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 look. There we go. Right in the taper. Look, right to the last minute. What's the matter with people? It's fast paced at the roadside, but in the control room. Things are as dead as night. I'm bored. We normally expect like a job every 10 minutes, sometimes every like 30 seconds, but there's just nothing on the box. We've only had a handful of jobs and we've mostly just twiddled our thumbs, waiting for something to happen. This is a nice salad, this is. <laughs> I like the way they made you look like chips. <laughs> no, that's a rad <laughs> That's definitely cucumber. Hi, yeah, can I have a chicken, uh, chicken burger meal, please? You're going to hate me as well. I've only got 50s. It'd be amazing, actually, how many people are up this time of night. Suddenly, the quiet of the control room is shattered by the arrival of some very unusual visitors at Junction 23. Horses in the road racing. Um, it's not clear if they're being ridden or if this is just organised by the horses themselves. These are wild horses, no people are riding them. Ah, OK, it's a, um, about 12 horses. Right, this is fun now. There's a horse. Oh, no, this is my way home. Get off my mode. Loose horses are often a problem on the network, and Emily is concerned for the safety of one of her nocturnal maintenance teams. Oh, geez, that's right where this guy's putting on his roadworks. Oh, let's give him a ring back. Six horses are now heading towards Potter's Bar. Hello, it's Emily. I spoke to you just a minute ago. I want to let you know about an incident that's kicked off in the area where your roadworks are going to be. The loose horses are causing chaos. Five have been hit by vehicles and traffic officers are trying to keep control. Yeah. It turns out the horses aren't wild after all and help has arrived. The owner has come. Um, he's sort of lassoed his horses um, and is taking them down a slit road. This is, this is definitely a very typically weird night shift job. This is a bit crazy. After dark, the M25 takes on a life of its own. I see the moon rising. It's like the moon comes out and the crazies are like, let's go. <laughs> it's our time. Time has come. <laughs> see, we're in a vest. Lots of strange things happen on the motorway at night. In this job, I never realised I'd see so many people weeing and pooing and 
Unfortunately. <laughs> There's always roadworks, but do you ever see anybody working on there? Never. Never, never, never. Lots of bright lights, but there's no action. In actual fact, behind the bright lights and cones lies an army of engineers who are about to start their shift. With over 200,000 vehicles pounding the M25 each day, the motorway needs a lot of TLC. At Junction 10, a 20-year-old joint that holds the bridge together needs replacing. There's a certain distance we have to be back to make sure that to make sure the riggers sit in the right place. Yeah, yeah that's it. it, yeah. The joint enables the bridge to expand and contract with changes in the temperature. Without it, it would collapse. At a cost of four million pounds, the job has been a year in the planning and requires the help of one boy's favorite toy. This is a crane. It picks stuff up and puts it down in other places. This is my baby. As sad as it is, I'm a bit of an anorak wearer when it comes to cranes. It's pretty much a massive PlayStation, and you can even change the angle of it. The 90-ton crane will be moving the 9-ton bridge joint into place. It's a precise job that needs pinpoint accuracy. I am 25 years young. I've been doing this since I was about 20. I started driving Arctics and high abs and stuff and then wiggled my way onto the cranks. And I've looked back often since. <laughs> but it's far from child's play. So the rent is left a little bit. They are working against the clock and on the M25, time really is money. If we run late in the morning, we get severe yeah, penalties right, for being on the road. Probably about £5,000 for 15 minutes. It's 2 a.m. and this is the point they find out if the joint will fit in the hole. It's always the nervy bit. A lot of men on the road this time of night. You don't get many women. Apart from us girls. Us girls of the night. Close to Junction 23, it's just gone midnight, and traffic officers Ray and Sal have come across what looks like an abandoned car. There it is. It's in a very vulnerable position and doesn't have its hazard lights on. Well, it's people fast asleep. I'm pretty comatose by the looks of it. You guys okay? You can't sleep on the hard shoulder. Can you just turn your hazard lights on for me? Where's Ray? I can smell alcohol coming from that vehicle. Okay. Do you want to have a word and see if you can smell it? It might just be me. Sierra November 5-1. As a precaution, Sal calls the police while Ray tests out his sense of smell. Um, these glow sticks yours? Yes. How come she didn't use the, uh, the hazard lights? I'll scare my batteries in there. Yeah. The men were on their way home from a concert and have come up with a unique new safety feature. Why are there glow sticks out here? He said he threw them out to um, give some illumination on the vehicle. It doesn't take long for the police to arrive on the scene. As um, soon as I opened the door, I could just smell alcohol. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's the passenger or the driver, okay. um, which is why we've asked you guys to come. I don't yeah. want to let them go and then halfway down the road they end up crashing. Yeah, that's fine. I've got zero tolerance for drink drivers. And if these are drink drivers, then they need to be taken off the road. The innocent people that um, end up getting hurt, killed, um, it's just, I don't like them, <laughs> I don't like them at all. The legal limit on a roadside breathalyzer is a reading of 35. Take deep breath. Drink driving results in an immediate ban, a hefty fine, and sometimes prison. Okay. 
Four. Okay. Just one drink can triple your chances of an accident. One drink driver off the road. I'm happy with that result. Excellent. With two party animals safely off the road, elsewhere on the network, traffic officers Kim and Andy are dealing with animals of the furry kind. Sierra Coast 72, 72 host offer. Near Junction 7 of the M11, a horse has been taken ill on the way back from a competition. Right, let's see what we can do. See how we can assist. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's travelled fine coming to the show. And coming back, he seems to be wanting to go down. We don't know if he's going down with Kodak or whether it's him just being generally tired. Uh, so until I get him off the lorry, I can't tell anyone anything. It's not just the poorly horse the owner is concerned about. I've got two horses on board. They're standing next to each other. He goes down, he'll swipe the other one out. The vet's going to attend and assess, yeah. and then we'll be guided by them. Moving live animals on the motorway is a dangerous business, but the two horses cannot stay together in the trailer. So the team decide to bring in a second vehicle to transport the healthy horse to safety while they wait for veterinary assistance. We're just putting a hard shoulder box out now just for our own protection, to light the scene up a little bit better and protect the uh, stricken vehicle. The hard shoulder is not a safe place to stay. Of the vehicles that stop on the hard shoulder that were hit by another vehicle, the average length of time they were there before being struck was 11 minutes. I'll get two more crews, one from that way, one from that way. When your guys are here, we'll stop the traffic, we'll transfer the horses, job done. The only thing holding back the traffic is the traffic officer's vehicle. It's a risky maneuver in the daylight, but at night it could be deadly. We close both lanes because if one of those animals spooks, there's no way we can control it. And then it's in the lap of the gods where it goes. The horse box is now loaded with uh, left scene, and you can now release uh, both carriageways. Thank you very much. The roadblock has done its job almost too well. So you're saying the vet, stuck, the vet is in that traffic, are you? I don't know how far back he is, but he's, he's in that traffic behind us. So hopefully, no time at all. 10 minutes later, the vet is on the scene. All I've given at the moment is pain relief, uh, because he seems stable in himself. His heart rate's normal, his breathing rate's normal. Hopefully, just with pain relief and no sedation, we'll be able to get him off the, off the set road and I can carry on and have a horse look at him. We've got the other car putting the rolling road in. When they've got compliance in the traffic, we can wave these out. With the traffic behind held once more, Kim and Andy help the horse box safely rejoin the road so the vet can take the sick horse for further investigation. Back at Junction 10, it's busier than usual with the M25 workforce. It's actually nearly there, it just needs that little bit, little bit of internal shutter off. A team of 30 engineers are undertaking a four million pound bridge renovation. You need to come over this way a little bit, look, on the back. It's all tight. That's underneath, that's underneath now. 12 months of meticulous planning have come down to this moment. We've got to come over this way quite a bit. Really? Yeah. But the joint doesn't quite fit. That's it, that's it, it's in, it's there, it's just a fine tuning, the exact level it goes to. The clock is ticking, and with a hefty fine for overrunning, these engineers aren't adverse to fine tuning the old fashioned way. Just catching on the steel down there, you're going to it with the hammer. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You're well under, that's good there. The nine-ton piece of metal is now in place, and the engineers can finally hand the road back to the great British public. This traffic management is coming off. It's time to go home and go to bed. It's been another long shift of roadworks and roadblocks, cranes and crashed cupboards, horses and horseplay. And as the night comes to an end, another day is dawning on the M25 for it all to start over again. Bye, everybody. Remember, one team, one dream.